Hey guys, Jan here, codingwithjan.com. So, by now, GraphQL is pretty much industry standard for working with the Shopify API. Today we're going to be covering what the Shopify API is to begin with, all you need to know about GraphQL and how you can get started writing your first queries, and then of course also all the latest updates and features. So, it should be a lot of fun and let's begin. Alright, so most of us are already familiar with how Shopify websites are structured. On the first layer, we have the storefront where we showcase our products, also called the front end. Then we have the admin area where we can manage a store, like create new products or process incoming orders. That's the store's back end. And then all the data, like every product you create, every collection, every customer account, every incoming order, also needs to be stored somewhere. So behind the scenes, Shopify is operating some kind of database for us. Now, if you want to extend Shopify's functionalities, for example, print an invoice for every incoming order, then we as developers can't just tweak the backend code because that is pretty much locked up. So instead, we have to create external apps to implement new features, but we still need access to the database because if we want to print invoices, well, we got to know about incoming orders. And this is information that can be requested via the API. So the API is a programming interface that allows us to communicate with the store and the underlying database. Okay, so now that we roughly understand what the Shopify API is, let's talk about GraphQL, because that is the query language that we can use to articulate our request. So it's the language that we can use to tell the API what we would like to do. As an example, we could request the IDs of the five most recent orders, and in GraphQL, that would translate to the following. Also, when it comes to working with the Shopify API, there are two distinct operations that we can make in GraphQL that you should know of. First, we have queries, which are used to fetch data from the server. So they do not modify or change any data. This is purely for reading data, data about products, orders, customers, or the shop itself. And on the other hand, we have GraphQL mutations, which are used to modify data. Yeah, so we can create, delete, or update data. For example, we could change a product title or create a new order or update customer information, anything along those lines. Okay, now if we compare queries and mutations side by side, you will see that queries usually start with the query keyword. Oftentimes you can also leave that out because queries are considered the default and mutations start with the mutation keyword. In this query right here, we are requesting the fields product and title and we're passing the product ID as an argument. So this query requests the product title of one very specific product. In direct comparison, the mutation starts with the mutation keyword, as we mentioned. Product update is the name of the mutation we want to use. And this also takes an input, namely the ID of the product we want to change, and also the data fields we want to change. So in this case, we want to update the product title. And then down below, this last part here is called the selection set. And this is where we define what kind of data we want to get back from the server after our mutation was successfully executed. And that can be relevant for error handling or if you want to update the user interface after some data has changed. Okay, so now that we understand the fundamental principles, what is the best way to get started writing your first queries? The fastest way is to install the GraphQL interface. Yeah, so that's a graphical GraphQL interface, hence the name. And you can install this on any store. So you can just follow this link right here, install the GraphQL app. Yeah. Here we have to enter the shop URL. And then down below, you can select all the access scopes for the app. If you're practicing for the very first time, I would just go with the admin API and select all scopes right here. And then you can click install. So here I'm redirected to my development store and then install the app. And once everything is ready, this is what the welcome screen looks like. So you do get one query per default. And on top, you can also select which API you want to target. Let's just use the admin API and also the API version. I would recommend just using the latest. And then one tool that comes in super handy when writing your first queries is the GraphQL or GraphQL Explorer, which you can find on the left side right here, because that gives you an overview of all the available fields that we can request. And right now, shop and name are added in our query. We should be able to find that here as well. So if we scroll down, you can see that we have the shop right here and then all the available fields down below. And right now the name is selected. So if we deselect that, it gets removed from the query. 
and then close the shop object, it also gets removed from the query. Okay, and then we just have this placeholder for now, which we don't have to worry about. Then for the sake of this demonstration, let's imagine we want to grab the five most recent orders. So you would scroll back up to orders, the order, orders object, unfold that. We want to get the first five, then also in reverse order, so that we get the most recent order first. And then under nodes, we should find the order ID somewhere. It's right here. So let's click on that. Perfect. Yeah, so this tool is great for getting started because you can also expand your horizon a little bit, look left and right, what other fields might be available. But when looking for very specific things, I also find myself using Google a lot. Or you can also just work with the API documentation directly because then you would also find some examples and yeah, more detailed explanations about what every field returns. Okay, so now that we have a first query right here, let's also execute that and see what the response looks like. You just click this play button here. So here we have the response. Everything is contained in this data object here. And then under orders, we see all the IDs that we just requested. And we can also confirm that these are indeed the order IDs from my store. So then I would just go to orders. And for example, just grab the most recent one. So here you would see the ID from this specific order ending with 386. And this is exactly the same order that we see right here, also ending with 386. Perfect. Okay, I feel this is pretty straightforward, but there's also a second part of the response, which is quite interesting, because this part tells you the costs for our query. And to explain that, Shopify does have a rate limit on the API, so that no one can send like infinite amount of requests or infinitely complex requests. They have to ensure the API remains stable, so that's what this is for. And currently on this store, I have a maximum, or I have a rate limit of 2000 points also with a restore limit of 100 points per second. And this depends on your Shopify plan. You can look this up under the Shopify API rate limits. So my standard plan gives me 100 points per second, but on Shopify Plus, you would already get 1000 points per second. So a lot more. And this is also one of the latest updates from Shopify Editions because they just doubled the rate limits for the GraphQL admin API, which is quite impressive if you consider how many stores there are and yeah, it's quite a significant increase in bandwidth, which is awesome. Okay, beyond the maximum I have available on this store and my restore rate, you can also see how many credits or points I have currently available, like right after sending the query. So at this point, it's already filled up again. And you can see the requested query costs and the actual costs. Why might there be a difference? Because for example, I could request the first 10 products with a stock of less than five but there might only be two products who match that criteria. So in this case, the requested estimate would be higher than the actual costs and only the actual query costs get deducted from your available points. So most of the times you wouldn't have to worry about that, but it's still very important to keep in mind, especially if you loop through, let's say, some very large product catalogs or have a ton of queries firing, just make sure to include some timeouts here and there so that you never run out of available credits. Okay, so far so awesome. Now that we have the basics down, let's move one step closer to production. And most likely you wanna use GraphQL queries in some sort of app environment. And with the latest CLI and the remixed based app templates, you can literally create one in like two minutes. Now you just have to bring up the terminal and then type npm init Shopify app latest, hit enter, give it a name. So maybe we just call it a test app, hit enter. Start with Remix, JavaScript, and wait for everything to load up. And once that's complete, you can see that I have my new test app folder right here with all the relevant files. Let's navigate into that folder and then execute npm run dev. Here we also have to select the partner account and the development store. We want to install this app in so we can just follow the guided setup. And now the app server is already running. So I can follow this preview URL here to install the app on my development store. So here's my test app. Let's click on install. So this is what the app currently looks like. A couple UI elements with further resources we can read up on. And we also have these two buttons here to generate a random product. But yeah, point being, we successfully created a new app right here. Now, before we do anything else, I also want to show you that we do get a GraphQL preview link for our app right here. So let's bring that up. So this is kind of similar to what we've already seen. But this time, the GraphQL interface also has the same access scopes as your app. 
So you can test whether your queries would be accepted or if you have the right permissions and otherwise you would get an error. And this is very useful. I also asked a friend of mine who runs an agency where they only build Shopify apps and they said they're using this a lot. Also to demonstrate that, let me copy and paste the query that we had before where we requested IDs for the five most recent orders. And if I try to execute that now, we should see a scope error, access denied for order field. So we wouldn't have been able to run this query from our app. In order to fix this, we would have to go into our app folder and then bring up the config file, Shopify app.toml. And then under access scopes, currently we only have permission to read and write products, but we would also need permission to read orders. And then we would have to save this file, shut down the server for a second, and then redeploy our app with the new access scopes npm run deploy release the new version and now we can bring up the development server again npm run dev after updating the access scopes we quickly have to reinstall the app or update the permissions so update data access update we didn't change the app interface so this looks exactly the same but if we bring up graphql again we should now be able to run this query here let's see Yes, it did work. I don't have any orders in this development store. So yeah, we get back an empty array, but in theory it does work and we don't get any access denied or scope errors. So I can't emphasize enough how useful this tool is because you can test your queries, you can build them, make sure you got the right syntax. You can make sure that you get the right access scopes. Also get a feeling for what the response might look like because now I realized, okay, I don't have any orders in this store with meaningful test data, which would be helpful. So it's a really simple way to build and test your queries. All right, now the last missing piece of the puzzle is understanding how you can make GraphQL requests from your code. And conveniently, the app starter template already comes with this button right here to generate a new product. So if I click that, a random product or the snowboard here in the random color is added to my development store. And this is already a GraphQL mutation because that's how they add the product behind the scenes and the data we get back from that request. So in order to understand how that's done, we just have to explore the provided example. So back in VS Code, I'll minimize the terminal. And inside our project, let's bring up the app folder and then routes. And here we should find a file app.index.jsx. So this file correlates to the home screen that we just saw. And first I want to scroll down to the page markup, to the H HTML or React components, better to say. And let's see if we can find that button right here. So it should be right here, button, and the text is generate a product. So this is indeed the correct button. Down below, you can also find this conditional statement here that if we already created a product and we get some data back, if we already got a response, then we also want to print or we want to put out the yeah, response as JSON, just like, we, just like we saw on the front end. But yeah, for now, let's focus on this button here. So you can see that on click, we want to call this function here, generate product, which should be defined on top. So you can see that right here. So on click, this function is called, and this just submits a form, which has nothing to do with GraphQL. That's more like a remix specific pattern. But once that happens, a handler function is called. Let me show you that. Let me find it really quick. So it's right here where you can see const action. And then inside, you can see that they first take care of authentication. This is all done through helper packages, which are shipped out of the box. Here they pick a random color for the snowboard product that will be created. And down below is where we find the actual GraphQL request, also done via a helper package. And here we can find what we've learned today. So they're using a GraphQL mutation, populate product to be specific. And then they pass some data alongside that, for example, the product title, which is coming from a variable down below. Yeah, so it's the color plus snowboard. And it also seems they shuffle the price for the variant. Down below, they also define how the response should be handled. And in this case, they pretty much just return all the data as JSON so that we can display that on the app's home screen. So one more time from the app dashboard, if we click this button, the generate product function is called. Then we send the GraphQL mutation behind the scenes. And the response is pretty much just printed out right here in JSON.
So if you're building a Remix app, I highly recommend studying this example here. And if you're using any other tech stack, then I would highly recommend checking out the GraphQL admin API reference because yeah, for different client libraries, for example, curl or Node.js, you can find examples on how to make these GraphQL queries or Python or PHP or whatever you want to use as your go-to technology. All right, now before we wrap this video up, let's also quickly go over some of the highlights and latest features or changes to the GraphQL API. So one of the highlights from additions was the support for up to 2000 variants with the new GraphQL product API. This is currently in developer preview and will only gradually roll out. But yeah, that has been a pain point for merchants for a long time. The current variant limit was like 100 variants per product and you reach that relatively quickly if you have multiple sizes, multiple colors, because everything gets multiplied. So yeah, 2000 is a big update. Beyond that, the GraphQL API is constantly expanding. So for example, now we can also cancel orders via the GraphQL API, or the GraphQL API will also support the new combined listings. So yeah, they're constantly expanding and making new areas available. The increase in rate limit we've already been covering during this video when we were talking about query costs. Um, they also introduced a hotkey to launch the GraphQL interface, which we have been covering in detail. And I feel at this point, if you want to read up on some of these updates in detail, I will leave links and the best resources in the description as usual. All right, guys, and that's all I have for today. I really hope this was a helpful introduction to GraphQL. Now we've seen what the Shopify API is, how GraphQL plays into that, learned the basic syntax and how you can get started writing your own queries, either in the GraphQL interface or in production from code in your apps. Now it's upon you because it really depends on what you want to build specifically, but I do think you have the right tools at hand. And otherwise, yeah, let me know your feedback in the comment section. I always love to read that. And if you need more support, check out the links in the description and then have an amazing rest of your day. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.